This is where it all began, Lindsay Street. Over a hundred years ago, Westminster Presbyterian Church was born here. This is the story of Westminster Church. The year was 1894, and South Bend at this time was expanding. Every 10 years, the city was growing by at least 50% and was quickly growing out from its center. In a time before automobiles, this made it difficult for many to attend the churches in the downtown area. So the idea for a Sunday school in this region was spun to the churches of First Baptist, First Christian, and First Methodist, but each were busy working on other mission branches. It was when this idea was proposed to First Presbyterian Church that the idea for a Sunday school in this region finally took hold. On September 16, 1894, First Presbyterian established a committee to procure a room and establish a Sunday school. It would only be a few short weeks later, on October 5, 1894, that in the vacant park grocery store a little west of Leland, on Lindsay, the first service of this fledgling Sunday school was held. A whopping 136 people attended, filling the store to capacity. With such large numbers coming to this new Sunday school, it didn't take long for First Presbyterian to see that larger quarters would be needed. Reverend Henry Webb Johnson, preacher of First Presbyterian at the time, requested Mr. and Mrs. P.E. Studebaker to donate the lot across the street at the corner of Scott and Lindsay. With the land donated, the church needed a building, and soon found it in the guise of the old Episcopal Church building. Finding out the building could not only be purchased, but moved to the new lot, the Sunday school was quick to raise the money to do so. Using a subscription, the new Sunday school not only had a new building, but soon had it debt-free. It was in this building that Westminster as we know it was started. The new building was given the name the Westminster Chapel, and hosted different pastors who would preach when they could make it. At these early meetings, many attendees gave their lives to Christ, and 27 people became members of First Presbyterian. It didn't take long for First Presbyterian to see that a shepherd was needed to lead this new flock, and Westminster's first regular speaker, W.E. Shirey, who at the time was a student at McCormick Theological Seminary, was given the call to speak at the church while still taking classes at the seminary. Under his leadership in 1896, a petition was given to the Logansport Presbytery for a new church. On May 11, 1896, the Presbytery met in the Westminster Chapel, and Westminster Church was born. The new church was constituted of 47 original members, with the numbers going up to 66 by the next week. The church would grow by leaps and bounds, though no special meetings were held. In 1899, a permanent addition and a furnace was added onto the little building for a whopping sum of $600. By Christmas of that year, the membership had grown to 290 people, while the building could only accommodate 150. Tents were soon put up around the building to contain Sunday school classes. Mr. Shirey would continue to lead the church up to the summer of 1903 when he accepted a call to lead the First Presbyterian Church of Hammond. He would be succeeded in the fall of 1903 by Reverend Henry Hostetler. It was under Reverend Hostetler that it was decided that a new church building, one that could better fit the congregation, was needed. Construction on the new building started in 1907 and would finish the following year. On November 15, 1908, all the money for this new building was pledged and the old pipe organ from First Presbyterian Church was donated. The cost of the building and the lot to the north cost the congregation $26,500. The largest growth of the church would occur in 1913 following the tabernacle meetings under Billy Sunday. Around this time, the church had grown to 652 members, two-thirds of those people joining a profession of faith alone. The church would continue to grow through the teens and would see a quick succession of preachers with both Dr. Eels and Reverend Gross only staying a combined total of six years. In 1923, Reverend Jones would attain pastorship of the church and would lead it for the longest time of any preacher in Westminster history. Many different programs were started at this time. A junior choir would soon be established in 1925. The Christian Endeavor Society, made up of young men and women of the church, as well as the Light Bearers, a group of younger boys and girls, was also established. The Women's Missionary Society and Mary and Jones Guild were also created to study missionary needs. Other groups were the Mary Rachel Circle and the Women's Auxiliary. Even the Boy Scouts would start meeting at Westminster on Wednesday nights. 
Westminster would be the center of many groups. In 1935, one of the most successful and longest lasting groups was formed at Westminster under Reverend Jones. A young married couples class was created to help couples under the average age of 35 to get better along at church. The group started meeting in the homes of its members, but would eventually grow large enough that it would have to meet in the church building itself. In March of 1940, the class was able to establish a nursery and over the years provided many different things for the church. The group lasted over 50 years and would soon change its restriction on age to incorporate all members. While under Dr. Jones, Westminster would reach its highest point. The church continued its physical growth with the purchase of a new organ in 1928 and adjoining property on Scott Street in 1936. In 1927, membership would top 700 members, and in 1936, Sunday school enrollment would hit its highest ever point at 583. But not all would be rosy for Reverend Jones during this time. In 1928, the Reverend's wife would die suddenly at the age of 39, leaving him three children to take care of. Later, in 1944, his middle son would be killed at Kwajalein while going to the aid of a wounded comrade. Reverend Jones would resign by the end of the year and die in 1945. His son would join the ranks of six other Westminster families who would lose their sons during the Second World War. Reverend Jones, um, towards the time when he was getting ready to retire, I. My recollection is that he lost a son in World War II, and I just uh, one uh, morning uh, he got reflecting on the son and uh, broke down into tears, and uh, you know so. that made an impression upon me. As soon as the war ended. Reverend Martique would be installed as Westminster would celebrate its 50th anniversary a year later in 1946. In 1951, the church remodeled the sanctuary and chancel, but was to see their work undone only a few months later when fire, which started in the basement, would gut most of the sanctuary. It would not be until 1953 that the sanctuary would be rededicated. Reverend Martique would leave shortly after this event. He would be followed by Dr. J. Berg in 1954, who would lead the church for the next nine years. During the 50s, the church would host many activities and find itself a hub for many of its members. While the church continued many of its religious classes and prayer groups, it had eight women's circles, a past 65 club, a basketball team, bowling team, and three softball teams. New church workers were added and many different youth groups were established. So much emphasis was placed on the youth that in 1958 it was decided that a new education wing should be added to the church, with it finally being completed in 1959. Dr. J. Berg would step down in 1963 and would be followed by Reverend Nolan. He would only serve for four years, but it was during that time that the seed to build a new building would take hold. It was decided in 1967 that Westminster would construct a new building at its current site on Cleveland Road. It would be for Reverend Collier to see that transition take place, and he would be established as pastor in mid-1967. After much planning and time for construction, the new building was finally ready in the summer of 1971. Through a dramatic service starting in one church and then with its members marching to the new church, the new church was dedicated on June 27th. Due to the generosity of Eleanor Goss, who left her estate to Westminster, the mortgage for the new building was able to be paid off in 1979. Westminster would continue its mission from this location. With an active youth group, fun fairs, and many social events, the church utilized its new building to its fullest potential. In 1972, a radio ministry was first broadcasted from the church over 103.1, and later in the decade, clowns were utilized in the children's ministry. Through the decades, Westminster would continue to touch people's lives. It would not only be a place for them to gather, but also help increase their understanding of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Westminster Presbyterian has had the moniker of the Friendly Church, and this is a title that has held proudly over the years. As it faces the challenges of this new century, one thing remains, the friendliness of its congregation as they preach the good news of Jesus Christ.